Hi, I'm Irving Sanchez, an AutoCAD certified. AutoCAD is one of the most used computer drafting programs in many industries such as architecture, engineering and others to create 2D and 3D designs. This tutorial provides AutoCAD beginners like you with the concepts to start drawing in AutoCAD effectively. We'll review the user interface and lead you step by step through the most used AutoCAD tools, menus and features. I will take you from the basics all the way up to be able to plot your drawings electronically as a PDF. And with all of that out of the way, let's learn AutoCAD. It's important to mention that you'll be learning AutoCAD in the regular 2022 version, but other versions have the same tools. Also, to improve your learning experience, there will be time stamps so you can go back to any specific section. Finally, you can slow down or speed up this video to match your learning pace. So if you installed AutoCAD for the first time, you'll have a icon like this. So simply double click on the AutoCAD icon to open AutoCAD 2022 and this window will pop out but click cancel for now because we don't want to export any previous um, settings for older versions so once we have AutoCAD open the first thing that you'll see is a couple of sample drawings from AutoCAD you'll have also the open and new options to access drawings but what I want you to go is over here on the AutoCAD icon and click on it and we're gonna click the new to start creating your brand new drawing so here AutoCAD is giving you different uh, templates to start a drawing so you don't start from scratch and what I want you to pick for this tutorial is the tutorial I arch which is imperial architecture this is a template that um, have the settings for architecture uh, in imperial if you want for mechanical is this one over here and if you want in metric units are these templates over here okay so let's select that and open so right out of the way AutoCAD is placing you on paper space so don't get confused since we are here let's solve or talk about one of the uh, important concepts to learn this software which is the difference between paper space and model space so model space here is where you're gonna draw mostly all of your drawings and in paper space this is like an electronic sheet so right now this sheet it's a size if I right click over here on this tab and click page set a manager I can see that the size of the sheet is 24 by 36 so I'll click close but this is a way to uh, print whatever you have on model space here on this paper size we'll go in more details later on but at least you have a sense or uh, a knowledge about the difference between a paper space or layout and model space okay so before we start doing anything here if you were my best friend I will 
teach you first how to move yourself inside the program, how to navigate this new or brand new software for you. So you can simply move your mouse to move your cursor and go through the tools and commands and select any command uh, using the left click on your mouse but also you'll need other functions like for instance zooming in or out and for this use your mouse wheel so you can zoom in or out you also need to learn how to pan so for this hold your middle mouse wheel and move your mouse like so and finally you can zoom extend your drawing in your entire drawing by double clicking on your middle mouse wheel like so to kind of zoom extend on your entire drawing right now we don't have anything but you got the idea now that you know how to move in this new software for you which is AutoCAD in this case 2022 I want to introduce you to another concept very important which is the ribbon. The ribbon is right here and it is a way to organize your tools in a way that it makes sense for you, for the user, right? So for instance, if we go to the home tab, we'll have a draw panel which all have all of the tools to start drawing lines circles arcs rectangles and so on and if we go to the modify panel we'll have tools to modify any existing drawing and again the same with annotation panel which have all of your annotation tools or commands like text dimensions and so on so that's the ribbon in a very basic concept but I hope you can kind of get a better sense or idea of how AutoCAD uh, organize its commands. Now whatever is on the ribbon, let's say the line command or tool for instance, if you hover over it will give you a brief description so it says line creates straight line segments which is you know something that will help you to to get a better idea about each command but any command that is here on the ribbon you can also use uh, the command using a keyboard shortcut for instance if i want to draw a line i can simply type line and press enter right instead of clicking here from the ribbon or I can also use its shortcut L so L and press enter and you can start drawing lines so at this point I don't want to start drawing anything yet because I don't want to confuse you what I want to for you is to understand first how AutoCAD things how things work here in the AutoCAD environment so once you start using commands you you are in better shape so let's say for instance that we want to use this command line right so i'll left click on it and hey i'm totally new here what do i do right so let me introduce you to another concept that you need to know which is the command line the command line is this over here this white box or rectangle and it's gonna be your best friend why because it will guide you with instructions to use any command so right now for instance i'm using the line command and it says specify first point okay so i can pick any point so i'll pick here and then hey what do i need to do now well the command line my best friend is telling me specify next point okay so i'm gonna click here okay so what happened next specify next point oh so i can keep specifying next points like so okay 
and then what's next it says you can click close to finish this or you can type C also or you can simply hit the escape key on your keyboard and you will be out of the line command again this is an object full of single lines now just to give you another example let's use the circle command really quick and you can click on it again you can use its shortcut C and press enter and I don't know anything about the circle so AutoCAD help me please specify center point for circle okay I want to be my center point here click or left click and then says the command line specify radius of circle well I want this to be two feet radius so I'll type two feet and press enter nice so we just draw a circle of two feet radius now we don't want to draw just random things right so let's delete these objects and let's start drawing something more professional so now that we need to remove these objects let me introduce you another concept that it's about selections so before we just learn to select objects individually like that but there is also two important selections that are called crossing selections and there are two one is from right to left you will have the green crossing selection and from left to right you will have the blue crossing selection and let me show you the difference so if I do the green crossing selection whatever my green rectangle touch would be selected if I touch a little bit of this line like so you'll see that it also gets selected like so now in the other way the blue crossing selection it's whatever it's included if I touch this line a little bit nothing will happen do you see it only gets selected whatever it's included on that blue rectangle okay so that's a very important concept to know when especially when you are modifying your drawings All right now I'm gonna delete this so to delete this I can simply use the keyboard or the key delete and press enter so I have a drawing that I want to use to kind of give you um, a better idea of uh, how to draw something more professional in the AutoCAD program right because we don't want to draw um, just basic stuff like lines um, circles and so on we want to draw something that is more um, appropriate to learn this software right so let me open this existing elevation that I have over here I'm gonna double click to open it and basically this is an existing elevation that needs to be finished here based on this image so what I'm gonna do is um, so let's um, start drawing and this will help us to introduce you another concept which is the idea of using tools or commands and one of the very first commands that I want to talk about is the line command right which is right here line so if you left click on it again following the instructions specify first point 
so I'm gonna draw this over here this building and if I hover over this point you'll see a small uh, green rectangle and a text that says endpoint that means that I'm using a precision setting which is right here on the status bar this is called the status bar and it's called object snaps so if you click on it these are your precision settings and remember we saw endpoint is because it's checked if I uncheck that and try again you can see that I cannot snap to that specific corner so I need my endpoint to snap precisely so I can click now to start my line but I didn't want to start from that point so again I'm gonna start the line command using the shortcut L and pressing enter and then instead of clicking on it I'm gonna zoom out using my mouse wheel and I'm gonna move it like so and then hover over this move it like so click and then right now my line can be moved in any angle but I want to constrain that because for this specific drawing we're mostly gonna use orthogonal lines right so let's turn off this polar tracking uh, precision setting and let's turn on this ortho mode so what it does is if you click on it you will start drawing lines orthogonally and lines that are nice and straight now want based on this picture to draw my storefront at the same height as this other one so what I can do is hover over this till I see endpoint and then I can move to the right like so when I see once I see the little white X that means the extension is working so I can click anywhere in here I'll click here and finally I can move to the right and again my object snap is now working here because I might need a different one so let's check click here and you can see there is a perpendicular object snap so it's unchecked once I checked it then I can snap to that perpendicular line great click to finish my line I can simply hit escape and I just draw a couple of lines to represent the storefront now they have a thickness so I'm gonna introduce you to another command and a way to kind of things the same as AutoCAD is are you gonna we, we want to modify these lines we don't want to draw brand new lines so where should that command be in the modify panel of course so what I want to do is copy a, a line so let's find it over here copy so click on it and again I don't know anything about copy so the command line our best friend is telling us to select objects I want to copy this line and then I want to I have to press enter once I do that it says the command line specify base point so I'm gonna click here on this click and then it says specify second point so depending if I move it to the left or to the right it will create a copy of my line so I'm gonna move it to the right and I want to pick a specific distance so I know this 
and start from frame is about 2 inches so I'm gonna type 2 and press enter once I do that the align was copied and I can keep copying more objects but at this point I want to press escape to finish that copy now let me use a different command for this other line instead of using the copy command I'm gonna use the offset command and the offset is a way to modify to create a parallel line of an object so again since we are modifying it should be here on this tab so where is the offset command you can hover over it and you will find it over here offset creates parallel objects so i'll click on it and hey help me command line i don't know anything about offset it says specify offset distance so we know it's two inches so press enter select this line over here because it's telling me to select the objects to offset so I'll select that a specify point on side to offset so if I move up it will set to that side I want to move it down because remember this is aligned with that storefront so I'll move it down and click anywhere here click and it offset parallel line of my object I can simply press escape now and now we need another command to clean up these two little edges and that command would be another modification and this would be the trim command which is right here so you can click trim to it says trim objects to meet the edges of other objects so or you can type its shortcut tr and press enter I'll zoom in with moving my mouse wheel and I'll trim this line if you don't know of course it says here select objects to trim or shift select to extend so my objects to trim is this and this other one I can now press escape and my storefront is getting in there again let me see the picture okay it has two frames in this way so let me copy these lines over here using the co copy for copy I'll press enter and then specify base point since I don't need to draw with precision here I can just click anywhere on the model space right here for instance and then specify second point I'll move it like here like so and finally press escape so at this point I want to introduce you another command which is extends extends is right here on the modify panel again so if you click here on trim you will find the hidden over here extend so once you click on it you can read the instructions select object to extend so i'll click this object it will extend all the way to the closest object and this over here like so and i can also extend two of the same objects at the same time like so click and finally hit escape I also need to copy these other frames the vertical ones so again the same process select CO for copy enter I need to copy these objects with precision this time so I'm gonna click this endpoint click and then click here like so 
I can now press escape and again using the extend command now this time I'm gonna use its shortcut E X and press enter again I'm gonna click once twice and if I keep clicking one twice it will go to the next line and if I do it one more time it'll go to this line click click like so and press now I could use the trim command I'm still inside the extend command but I could use the trim command to trim these little pieces or intersections but a trick or shortcut is to hold the shift keyboard the shift key on your keyboard and then you will automatically change to the trim command so now you can start trimming your objects like so again holding the shift key you can change between extend and trim once you're done simply hit escape okay so now I'm gonna draw this um, this uh, trim over here and let's use I could simply copy this trim over here but I'm gonna use another command because I wanted to I want to keep showing you useful commands that will help you to draw in the AutoCAD program so I'm gonna draw something so you gotta be here on this draw panel and this would be the rectangle command so I'll click on it and I'm gonna draw on top of this so I'm gonna follow in the instructions it says specify first corner point okay first corner point corner point would be over here click and then says specify other corner point okay it's gonna be over here click so now let's select that rectangle that we just draw and another new command for you is the move command so the move command gotta be on the modify right because we're just modified in an object it's right here move you can also use its shortcut which is m and press enter so i need to move this object with precision so i'm gonna get closer with my middle mouse wheel and then i'll click here on this endpoint click then i move pan holding my middle mouse wheel and then i get closer and then click on this perpendicular or snap now i need to stretch this thing all the way here i cannot use the extend command i need a new command which is stretch gotta be on the modify because we're modifying an existing object so it's right here stretch so let's use it and what it does is basically stretches objects so if i click on it following instruction it says select objects so if i select this object let's see what happened so i'm gonna press enter and it's saying specify base point so i'm gonna pick this point over here click and it's saying specify second point oops as you see is moving my object instead of stretching it so let's cancel that because i don't want that cancel hit cancel or escape on your keyboard and let's try it one more time stretch from your ribbon click now the problem was that we selected the entire object like this but for the stretch command to work 
it needs to be selected in a special way which is the window crossing selection so if I click once and then I need to include the piece that I want to stretch so I need to include it like this so set select objects specify opposite corner so I want to specify here click and then select objects so that means I need to press enter again again from the command line specify base point so I need to stretch this with precision so I can snap to this line so I'll click here click and then specify second point as you can see it's now stretching only this part and then finally I'll click here like so great so with very few commands like copy trim move extend offset we were able to create this elevation now let me introduce you another useful command which is the hatch command and hatch is basically this object right here so if i hover over it says hatch and if i select on it um, you have the hatch editor to change the settings and basically this is a pattern that repeats over and over to create a one single object that is very useful uh, to create things like this like bricks cmu facades and so on so let's use the hatch command and since this is a new object that we're creating gotta be on the draw on the draw panel it's right here hatch so click on it again it says fields and enclosed area or selected objects with a hatch pattern or fill so click on it and this gotta be inside an area like this I cannot hatch over here where there is no enclosure area so again I'll click here and I don't know anything about hatch help me AutoCAD hey my best friend the command line says pick internal point okay I'm gonna pick here click and then to cancel or finish I'll just hit escape alright so now I could select the hatch pattern again because this is different right I want it to look like this so I could use the hatch again the shortcut keyboard for the hatch is H so I could type H and press enter and I could pick here by clicking on this uh, hatch pattern exactly the same as this but instead I'm gonna cancel that because I wanted to show you or introduce you another helpful or useful command which is the match properties so for this command its keyboard shortcut is MA and it's called match properties and what it does is if I press enter is it match the properties from an object to another one so let's say I don't know anything about match properties let's see the command line it says select source object my source object I want to be this hatch click now it says select destination object is this click now I just press escape and my building is done great now at this point we went over many useful concepts such as the ribbon that has or organize your commands and tools the command line that help you um, or give you instructions to finish or use any command the status bar here with the precision settings or object snaps so it can help you draw 
better and more efficient and we slightly went over the difference between paper and model spaces so you know where uh, you are located inside the AutoCAD drawings now at this point uh, you might say hey um, we started with this other drawing right from scratch if I click on it I can change between each drawing why are you using now uh, another drawing well you are right so let's let's fix that let's um, let's uh, fix that by introducing you another technique or trick which is to transfer or copy one drawing from one piece of drawing from one DWG or file to another one so for this let's select all of this elevation and let's use the shortcut Control c on your keyboard once you do that you can go to the drawing that we start from scratch and always in model space to place your drawings and use the shortcut Control v once you do that if you don't know what to do next again follow the command line instruction it says specify insertion point and this is this shortcut is basically using a command called paste clip so i'm gonna zoom in rolling my mouse wheel and i'm gonna pick here like so now if i go back to the other i can uh, save and close this drawing so I'm gonna show you another command to save in your drawings right you can go here on the quick access panel this is called the quick access panel and you can click the save command to save your drawing or you can also use a shortcut control s to use the same command q save now to close your drawing you can simply close here on this X or close it here on this other X close now we are back to the drawing that we started from scratch from the Imperial architecture template so uh, because we wanted to show you how we're doing this from scratch right okay so uh, another useful command that you're gonna need is a text right so text is right here on the annotation panel you can also type on the command line text and press enter so now again i don't know anything about text help me command line it says specify start point of text so for this example I want to call out for this ramp I want to name that as existing ramp so I'm gonna place my text over here click and then it says specify height at this point I don't know the height of my text yet so I'm just gonna simply type enter or press enter sorry and then for the rotation I just type zero and press enter once I do that I can type my note I said existing ramp and to get out of the text mode I'll simply click outside here on model space anywhere click and then press escape now as you can see the text is showing so tiny over here and this is where you need to learn another important concept which is about scale factors so we can figure out the the perfect size for your text and dimensions and liters that we'll talk about uh -huh. In, in a few minutes so let me show you what you're gonna need is a scale factor chart like this 
and this is basically um, a drawing a scale uh, this is for architectural and this is for civil and these are scale factors that are based on the architectural scale but we first need to go here in AutoCAD and let's go to paper space right on the layout here click and what we need to do is um, understand how AutoCAD can fit such a big building right because in reality this building is so big you can see the height is 9 feet 28 feet how can AutoCAD fit this big building on such a big uh, such a small piece of paper this is remember we went right click and page setup and we saw that this is 24 by 36 inches paper so the way they do it is using viewports and viewport when you create a when you use a template AutoCAD already give you a viewport which is this one over here and you select on it is a viewport that right now is locked but I can unlock it by clicking here and the scale for this viewport is one quarter if you click on this scale you can change the scale let's say let's change it to one eighth as you can see it's one eighth and this scale factor is the one that I show you on the chart remember so that's one quarter that we're saying and that's the factor 48 so but let me first remove this viewport so I can show you how you can create it if, if for some reason AutoCAD doesn't give it to you automatically so I'm going to remove that viewport using the delete uh, key on my keyboard and to create a viewport you will need the shortcut MB and press enter then you can click a point over here it says specify corner of viewport so I'm gonna pick let's say over here once and then my command line says specify opposite corner so I'll click here like so as you can see uh, my building is showing now from model space so but I need to select my viewport and pick a correct scale so I'm gonna try one quarter that looks about right uh, let me try maybe a little something bigger no that looks that looks right to me so finally to move or place your model or building better in your viewport you can double click inside your viewport with your left uh, left left side of your mouse so double click and then you can pan the way that I show you before holding the middle mouse wheel so holding it you can move your building like so I'll place it here and then to get out simply double click outside the viewport and then again just to double check select your viewport I know it's in one quarter scale so knowing that we can change the text size accordingly so let's go back to the chart that I showed you earlier now that we know that our paper space it's using a viewport with one quarter right one quarter scale we gotta go here on the standard text and if we go down we can see that at one quarter the text size is gonna be six inches and again this is for imperials right but if you were using the metric units um, it's the same idea but you have uh, this metric unit chart but since we're using imperial 
I'm gonna show you with Imperial, but it's the same method and idea. So six inches, we'll say, we said that is the height of our standard text for one quarter. So let's go back to model space and let's select our text, tiny, tiny text. And let me introduce you the property palette. This is another concept that you need to know. And the property palette, you can access it by typing a shortcut PR and pressing enter. Once you do that, you, with your text still selected, you see that the property palette basically is the way to control settings of each specific object that you select. So if we select our text, we can go scroll down with our mouse wheel. And if we go here on the text, there is a height option. So let's click on it and we said that is six inches, right? For a one quarter um, scale. So I'll type six inches and press enter. As you can see, our text are bigger and we can close the property palette. This is the correct scale now for this note. Now, the next thing that I want to show you or introduce you is a call a leader and the command to draw a leader is simply um, a line that join an object to a note. So for instance, the shortcut is L E for Q leaders. So I'll press enter. And then again, I don't know anything about leader. Help me please command line. Specify first leader point. I'll click here. Let me zoom in. And since I cannot snap here, on the middle of this uh, ramp um, let me see if I can use another OSNAP setting and let's try midpoint that would be the middle of an object so if I click here as you can see now a triangle shows and it says midpoint that means it's the middle of this line over here so I can click here to start my leader and then what else it says specify next point so I'm gonna again I want my leader to go nicely and straight so I'm gonna use the ortho mode on to go nice and straight and go down click and then again the command line says specify next point I click here and then I can hit escape. Now, this leader doesn't look quite right. Why? Because if we see the arrowhead, if we zoom in, the arrowhead is so tiny <laughs> that you cannot even see it. So this is a problem of the scale factor. But now that we know our scale factor, we know we're using one quarter uh, drawing scale equals a foot we know the scale factor is gonna be 48 so we're gonna use this number now 48 so remember that number and let me introduce you your very first system variable and it's gonna be the dim scale basically yes, this is a new concept for you and the system a system variable is basically a way to to set the settings for any particular command so in this case dim scale what it does is it changes the scale factor in this specific drawing so if I press enter based on the command line again I don't know anything about dim scale it says enter new value for dim scale 
which is the factor that I just said to you 48 right so 48 and press enter once I do that it looks like nothing happened but if we try again the leader command le that's the shortcut and press enter and if I start my leader over here click and then again it says specify next point I'll click here and then finally I'll click here and hit escape you can see that now the arrow shows with the right arrowhead size so I can get rid of this other one and use the delete key on my keyboard so this is a professional and quick way to have all of your text annotations leaders even dimensions uh, to the correct scale based on the chart like this one and based on the dim scale um, factor the last thing that is missing here on this elevation and i want to introduce you is a dimension a dimension is a way to add uh, a distance or a length a measurement of an object and i want to measure um, this building facade so if you go to the annotation panel you'll see here different annotate different dimension types linear which creates a linear dimension a line angular and so on but there is a better way to add dimensions which is this one over here the dimensions and what it does is it creates any of these dimension types with the same mm, dimension command it's called dim so let's click on it and again i don't know anything about dim command it says select objects or specify first extension line so i'm gonna click here on the side of this building like I click now it says specify second extension line origin so if i move down it's gonna measure like that that's not what i want so i'm gonna move to the right and then pan with my mouse wheel like so and then finally click over here like so click and then it says specify dimension line location so i want my dimension to be here like so so i'll click and then press escape so you can see um, your dimension is right there and now what we need to fix is this text over here so let's use the stretch command yes and press enter now uh, let's select objects remember that we cannot just select this object we need to do a crossing selection and what we want to stretch is this part right with the text so I'm gonna stretch these objects like so and then I want to deselect the dimension because I don't want to stretch the dimension so a trick for that is hold the shift key on your keyboard and then select the dimension to deselect it now I can press enter to select my objects as the command line is suggesting I press enter and then specify base point I don't need to be like specific here like precise so I'll simply click anywhere here and then second point I'll click here like so okay now another thing that I just noticed is the text of my dimension and this text of my note is not consistent this is smaller and we know this text is right 
the size so let me um, open my dimension styles because this is like the uh, the dimension that AutoCAD create for us so let's take a look at it and type D and this will open a dimension style uh, panel or window where you'll see what dimensions exist in this drawing so if I type enter sorry if I press and you can see that we have this standard that's what AutoCAD creates and let's um let's change that let's um change the let's modify it or let's um yeah let's modify that one by clicking here and then let's verify something here the text size so as you can see the text size is 332s of an inch 30 seconds of an inch <laughs> and if we go to our chart we can see that our standard text is 1 eighth it's not 330 seconds at 1 inch equals 1 inch so we need to change it to 1 eighth so let's go back and let's change 330 seconds of an inch to 1 eighth and click OK. So once we do that and click close, you can see that our text got bigger and it looks the same size. But we can verify this if we explode this. Let's um, introduce, let me introduce you another. Um, command which is called explode and it's right here on the modify and it's right uh, right here explode you can use its shortcut X and press enter and I'm doing this intentionally just to show you but the dimensions now got exploded in pieces and it's now a line another line and a text and if we select this text and open our property palette like before using the PR shortcut, we can see that our text height is six inches. And if we select our note, also is six inches. This is because everything is based on our scale chart and you'll always be uh, you always have consistent drawings using this method so I didn't want to explore my dimensions because you never should do that so let me show you how to go back so there is a command called undo or you can click this arrow over here so you click once twice you can see here it's saying undo explode so now you can see that your dimension is now uh, nice and complete so you just learned another important concept about how to manage your text or annotation size for your dimensions leaders and notes or text all right so now what we need to go over is layers layers it's a very important concept in AutoCAD and basically layers in the same way that ribbon organizes the commands or tools to make your life easier and put them on each uh, specific panel layers organized not your commands but organize your objects your lines your text everything so you can have more control to modify things quicker and layers for instance here in this drawing if we go to the layer panel 
and click over here we have the following layers these layers came from AutoCAD from the template the architecture imperial template that we selected um, so here for this specific elevation um, I'm using simply three layers for instance this if I select this line it says that is the A elevation medium and medium is the line weight of this line how it's gonna print um, if I select this hatch and go back to home it is on the A elevation fine this means it's gonna print fine um, very very light when I print or PDF this now only because it says fine or wide or or medium uh, would that be the reason for AutoCAD to know that it is actually light or dark no of course not so where do we change those settings let me introduce you to the layer palette the layer palette you access it by typing LA and pressing enter and basically layer palette is this let me you can left click on it and move it like so or you can right click on it and click anchor left so it shows like this and basically a layer palette is how it organizes your layers the same way as the ribbon organize your tools or commands it has the same importance layers because it will make your life so much easier when you edit or modify any existing drone and you'll see why in a, in a moment so we were talking about the line widths how we're gonna control if it's gonna bring la light dark or medium so let me go to let me expand this over here and let's for instance select the a elevation medium if we go here we can see that the line weight option if I click here is 0.35 now how or oh, how did I pick this uh, number for the line weight right well this is based on the CAD scan CAD standards um, because this is something that we need to follow not only uh, firms individually but this is um, something that it's like a standards for not only layers but line weights and even plots not plus that, sorry layers um, uh, layers naming line weights and others and what how this works is it's control or not control but it's called the United States National CAD standards which is right here and basically this is an organization that tries to organize um, some standards for drawings this is where the layer name hierarchy uh, comes from and also the line weights and so on so i'll leave a link on the video description if you want to take a look but that's where it, it comes from all right so that's for the medium and again for this one this is the layer a elevation fine the same idea its line weight is 0.13 so that's gonna print very very light um, all right so let's create one more um, layer to show you how how you can create your layer so basically um, if you select here on this icon it says new layer so i'll click on it and i can name this a elevation 
and then this is gonna be the dark so and press enter now I can change the color um, the color in this specific method of managing uh, how your language is gonna print doesn't really matter uh, you can pick any color but a recommendation is to pick any of these colors that are right here one two for yellow three and so on so for the dark color or white I'll, I'll pick blue and click ok the only uh, thing that you need to have into consideration when picking colors is that some users have the background dark like mine but some other users prefer to have it white so pick colors that can work in both uh, situations that would be like my suggestion all right so once we created our a elevation white and we need to change the line weight right because this we want to print uh, darker than these other two the fine and the medium so again I'm gonna change here the A elevation white and I'm gonna pick a one second right here I'm gonna pick the line weight 2.35 and click OK again that's based on the uh, United States National CAD standards it's not something that I'm picking randomly alright so now the reason why we need something that prints dark is because remember this building is in front of this other building so I would like to you know select this outline and make it darker make it print darker so I'm gonna to, to change a layer select the object and simply click here and change to a elevation Y so click and then you can press escape now we are ready to go to paper space or the layout sheet to see how we're gonna PDF this drawing now of course um, on a more professional level environment like you will need to add a text here called attack specifying at what the, uh, what drawing scale your drawing is we said that our drawing is at one quarter so you have to add a text here saying scale one quarter equals an inch and so on but that's something minor that you can go over and that you can do using the same text so what I'm gonna do is show you the next um, uh, concept which is uh, how to create a PDF an electronic PDF of your drawing so let's do a shortcut control P to access the plot dialog box so here what you have to do is since we're gonna create a PDF I'm gonna pick AutoCAD PDF or you could also pick TWG to PDF size of the paper is fine 24 by 36 extend is fine center always scale 1 to 1 always so you can print or PDF to the right scale scale line weights have that checked always here on the plot style um, they are using this plot style is based on the template that we picked the architectural imperial remember so it looks like they have only um, this will 
we need, we're gonna need a monochrome CTV that is not here because look what happened if if I do a preview of this it's gonna print like that in color we don't want that and this is basically because again we picked an imperial architectural uh, template that had the settings like that so I'm gonna cancel that and to fix this I'm gonna use a command called convert ps styles and it says this command converts a named plot style drawing to use color dependent plot styles that's what we want we want our layers to control the line weights so i'll click ok and then let's try to use the control p again and for this uh, let's go here and as you can see it gives us more options now what we need to pick is the monochrome ctv because we want to show or make a pdf black and white and the settings are fine monochrome let's do a preview and as you can see your elevation is looking beautifully again uh, the line widths are you know lighter the hatch the thicks of the the glass are showing lighter too and then this one is showing darker because is uh, this building is in front the text consistency again same size based on dim scale liters also and if this is perfect for you you can simply right click on it and choose plot and you can save it i'm just gonna save it here you can rename it as you wish and click save once you do that your elevation will look like so nice and neat if you want weekly tutorials to keep learning autocad on your own subscribe now and watch this video over here to show you how you can get an autocad certification like this